Welcome to Wager Talk TV, guys. I am Kelly Stewart, at Kelly in Vegas on Twitter, joined today by Teddy Covers, at Teddy underscore Covers. And we're going to talk about sports betting 101, as we've been doing. This is kind of maybe a 102, maybe even a 103 type topic. Teddy, let's talk about middling. So uh, a traditional middle, what I would think of is, Let's use college basketball. I take a team plus six mm -hmm. at home, but I lay the money line with the other team, and I'm hoping to get both results. Maybe the game lands on two, three, four, five. It doesn't matter. I'm happy that this team won, but this team covered. Sure, that's one way to middle. I mean, a more, I'm not going to say traditional way, but when people think about middling, they tend to think, all right, I'm going to lay two and a half with the favorite and take three and a half with the dog. Well, that's how NFL professionals, game. I think, usually sure. really think because mm -hmm. that is going over a key number. But I think, that, would you say that maybe the general public is looking to just cash in on both sides? Like maybe their favorite team is Kansas State, and they're like, well, K-State's favored by eight, so I'm going to lay this big money line with Kansas State, but I'm going to take the eight with Baylor. Well, I, I need to talk about the concept of middling first. The okay. whole concept of middling rests on one thing, and that's being able to make a great first bet. All right. If you're saying, all right, well, I'm going to take the points here and lay the money line there, you're setting yourself up for, you know, a Polish middle, you know, where you yes. leave both sides. And that's not what a middle is supposed to do. A middle is supposed to guarantee you that you're going to at least cash one of the two sides. Okay. So when you're laying two and you're taking five, you're either going to, you're going to cash at least one of those two and you have the potential to cash both or cash one and push the other. That's an optimal middle scenario. But... It's all predicated on being able to make a great first bet before the line moves and before the line moves significantly. Because when we're talking about a profitable middle, in football, you can get away with a one point middle on the key numbers two and a half, three and a half, six and a half, seven and a half. In hoops, you better have three numbers working in your favor, three points working in your favor before you really think about making that second bet after you've made a great first bet before the market moved. Okay, so we, you just talked about a couple of the numbers we're looking for in NFL and college football, the key football numbers that we all know about. Yeah, threes uh, and sevens. Right. Do we have any other numbers that you traditionally look for? Well, in, in hoops, your key numbers are around pick -up. You know, one, two, and three are the keyest numbers out there. Seven, uh, some people consider seven to be a very key number in hoops. I've found through my experience it's not quite as key uh, as you might hope sometimes. So, but certainly the numbers close to pick up, ones, twos, and threes, uh, more basketball games get decided by those numbers than any other. Okay, great stuff from Teddy. Guys, if you like this video, have an idea for a video, feel free to comment below and make sure you guys subscribe to our YouTube channel, Wager Talk TV.